Hello and welcome to our show, Tea Talk, Real Talk, Conversations Over Tea, where we bring guests on to talk about issues and topics that matter. And so we have a beautiful lady, her name is Anita Russell, who is an author, entrepreneur, just a philanthropist, a sister, and she's here to just tell us her journey about her book and, you know, what she's doing in this world for people. Hi, Sharon. How are you? It's a Thanks pleasure. For coming. You're welcome. You're welcome. It truly is a pleasure uh, to be here. Um, I have just been on a very incredible journey probably since, I guess, about February or March when I was invited to work on this project. Um, and one of the things that I can say is uh, I really enjoy social media. And social media is really the medium through which this actually happened. The uh, woman that I work with, her name is Erica Gordon, as the compiler. I've never even met her in person, right. but we've spoken on the phone, we've emailed, we've texted, we've done all of that. Um, and what she did was she was very instrumental in bringing together a group of 30 women, mm -hmm. myself included and her also included, to write this book. And it was an incredible journey um, on a personal level, okay. but also in terms of connecting with all. I have like a whole entire network of people now right. that I did not have right. prior to the book. So and it's tell been, us the name of the book. The name of the book <laughs> is Motherhood, Dreams, and Success. Um, and it's a, I'm sorry, I'm going to read the whole title. Motherhood, Dreams, and Success, You Can Have It All. Okay. And what the book is is basically a testimony to even though, uh, um, you know, women are primarily responsible for taking care of the children and raising up the family and all that sort of thing. But, you know, I believe God put a dream and a purpose in everybody, right. including women. Right. And so I think what happens is that we often find ourselves kind of putting all of the responsibilities and the family and, you know, ministry and right. all of that. We put all of that before ourselves. Right. Um, but what you often find is, and it was in my case, is that you just have this thing in the back of your mind that keeps telling you you're supposed to be right. doing something else. Exactly. <laughs> so that's kind of how I felt as I was, um, in the, not even as I was writing the book, but in the years approaching right. writing this book, right. I knew there was something else that I was supposed to that I was supposed to be doing. I knew it had something to do with writing because I would okay. say to my friends, I think there's a book inside of me. Okay. Like, I don't know wow. what I'm supposed to write with, mm -hmm. whatever. Right. But I knew something was going to come about. But I believe that that was just God speaking right. to me and letting <laughs> me know there's something that I have prepared for you. Right. So. And that's exciting. It's very you know, exciting. It's exciting when you have it inside of you and you're not really sure, but then here's someone that comes knocking on your door and that person now has helped you to, exactly. to get it out there. Exactly. And so that is very exciting. The book looks very nice. You know, I did start reading it. The story is, is really a nice story. Um, so you, you can tell us a little bit, just a drop. You know, we, we do want people to pick up this wonderful book. Yes, absolutely. Um, absolutely. Really inspiring. So I'll tell you a little bit about my own experience in actually reading the book mm -hmm. because I had not read any of the chapters from any of the other women. Right. Um, we basically submitted all of our work to the publisher and they did everything to kind of put it together. Mm -hmm. So I couldn't wait to just order. I just needed one copy right. so that I could sit down and read each one of the stories. Right. And reading the stories, having um, been on phone calls with them and meetings and, and all that sort of thing and having voices and faces <laughs> from social media, Facebook right. and all of that, but when I sat down and read each one of their stories, oh my God, <laughs> it was just, it was just a very incredible, enlightening right. experience because I heard them talk about different mm -hmm. things, but then this kind of gave me a lot more insight right, and of course. some of the things that they went through. And but in all of it, people came through, mm -hmm. and they uh, got to the place where they were striving to be. Right. Nice. Um, so I'll tell you just a hint just about a hint. my story <laughs> in the book because I really want people to go and read it, not just for my benefit, but just for the benefit of reading um, all of these incredible, uh, it's almost like a memoir in a lot of ways. Right. Um, so I start off the book talking about um, an experience that I had when I was very, very young. And I'm not going to give away any of the details, mm -hmm. but it was an experience that was very traumatic mm -hmm. for me. Um, and I believe because this experience happened to me when I was so young, mm -hmm. I don't think my family really realized the impact right. that it had on me. 
um, because I think people paid a lot more attention to my mom because mm -hmm. it was um, a loss that we experienced right. and it was, um, you know, we both were impacted right. by that. Right. But I think people just kind of looked at me and said, well, she's too young. Right. She don't know right. what's going they don't on understand. And, and all of that. Um, but it did impact me in a really, really incredible mm -hmm. way. Wow. And over the course of years, it's something that I very rarely talked about. Mm -hmm. um, I just didn't. It was just something right. that was inside of me. It was something that happened to me when I was very, very young, but I didn't really talk about right. it very much. Um, but as I was uh, writing this book, and after I finished writing, mm -hmm. and we were going through the publication process and everything, and I was kind of synthesizing my right. feelings and all of that that mm -hmm. I experienced as I was doing the writing, and it just occurred to me that in a lot of ways, my chapter is a tribute to my mm -hmm. sister. Right. Um, because I, I talk a lot about three things, mm -hmm. motherhood, sisterhood, right. and relationships. Right. Those are the three things that really emerged out of this book, right. and specifically uh, for me. Um, and it's the sisterhood component that relates back to my uh, sister. And what I came to realize is that so many women have touched my life. And I'm not saying men haven't. Right, I'm not right, saying that. Right. But so many women have touched my life. Mm -hmm. I mean, I look at you. Mm -hmm. Three weeks ago, I, I didn't know you. <laughs> just met. Right. Exactly, was... exactly. From my sister-in-law, people I grew up with, people I went to school with, people I do ministry with, mm -hmm. all of these people that touched my life right. and created a sisterhood right. for me that I didn't get to have right. with my own sister. And right. when I was younger, I used to often wonder what my life would have been like if we had, right, you know, course. we had the opportunity to kind of grow together mm -hmm. and and all of that. So that's one aspect of the book that really kind of, right. um, as I was writing and everything. Um, other aspects, I really talk about um, my career right. quite a bit. Mm -hmm. um, I talk about some of the dreams that I had when I was growing up mm -hmm. and. Uh, one of the dreams that I always had when, when I was very young was that I was going to go to medical school. Like right. I had this dream, like I was going to be a pediatrician, <laughs> I was going to have my own office, right. I was going to just do all, all of these uh, things. But um, as I grew, I also came to realize that sometimes we have a vision of ourselves mm -hmm. that doesn't align with God's vision. Exactly. And so sometimes you have to kind of take maybe what you thought was mm -hmm. your vision and put it over here right. and begin to listen to God's right. voice as he's... Um, guiding you and directing you. Mm -hmm. And that was really my experience. So um, when I was in college, that's when I realized medical school isn't for me mm -hmm. because my career got taken in a very different right. direction. Um, but it got taken in the direction of scientific research, yes. which when the first time I was in a lab, I can remember the first time right. I was actually in a laboratory. Right. I was like, wow, this is cool. <laughs> it was like maybe my sophomore year or okay. so in college. And I was just like, wow, I like this. Mm -hmm. And so that kind of veered me okay. off into a very different, um, a different direction. And so one of the things that I think about when I think about my life or where I'm, you know, working with people right. or talking with people is there are milestone decisions mm -hmm. along the way that either take you to the right or take you to the right. left. Yes. And when I, exactly, yep. <laughs> when I made that decision, that put me in a on a completely different path. Right. That path is what brought me to New Jersey. Had I gone to medical school, mm -hmm. everything would have been different because I had a completely different right, plan in place. Mm -hmm. And then God spoke to me one day, and I realized that this isn't what I'm supposed okay. to be doing. So it kind of put me over here. And for a minute, I didn't really know what I was supposed to right. be doing. So I spent about a year just trying to figure, figure things out. out and and all of that. Um, so then finally I did, and I ended up, you know, going to school actually like a year later okay. than when I graduated from high school. But I grew in that mm -hmm. year, and I got to know a little bit about right. me and and all of that. But like I said, that veered me in a completely different direction. Mm -hmm. And that direction, milestone by milestone mm -hmm. by milestone, is how I ended up in New Jersey and right. how I'm now sitting right. across yes. the table having this conversation yes. with you. Yes. So. You know, and a lot of times people think that you need to rush into college, and I don't think that's necessarily true. People should sometimes take exactly. a little time, whether it's six months, a year, two years, to really find yourself instead of just rushing. Because look how many people do either become doctors or something else, and they're not happy. That's right. not what they wanted. And sometimes they quit halfway there or they quit right after. Absolutely. You know, sometimes you have to just take a minute and just find out who you are, what it is that you want, what is it that God wants, because like you said, it's not always what we want, that what God wants. Yeah, so, exactly. And some of us can't figure it out. 
you know, so I think that's wonderful that you're able to figure it out, take a little bit of time, mm -hmm. and then find out who you are to be where you are today. Exactly. And interesting, in that year, I also found out a lot of things that I wasn't supposed mm -hmm. to do. Um, because like I said, it, it, that decision to not go here, and it, it put me in that place where I wasn't quite sure. So then right. I just started exploring. Right. I started looking at different jobs. I took civil service tests. I just looked, took mm -hmm. every test, military. I took mm -hmm. every <laughs> test that you could possibly imagine. But then as I was going through, it's like, oh, that's not what right. I'm supposed to be doing. Right. I'm not supposed to do that. I'm not supposed to do that, right. et cetera. Um, and then finally, I had an experience um, that kind of put me in the right direction okay. to make the right choice, right. be at the right university, right. Okay. and then everything kind of right. fell in place right. after that. Yeah. <laughs> so which university did you end up at? The University of Pittsburgh. Okay. Because originally, right. my um, plan was to go away. Mm -hmm. um, I was going to actually not go away for my first two years. I right. was going to stay in Pittsburgh the first two years. Okay. And I was um, accepted into the University of Pennsylvania. And that was when my plan was to go there, go to medical school, et, et cetera. Right. Um, but I had an interesting experience when I was there and I was um, getting ready to register for my classes. Right. And again, God spoke to me and just basically said, this is not what you're <laughs> supposed to be doing. And I figure at that point, I had two choices. I could either um, listen to that voice or ignore that voice. Right. And I decided, because of the feeling that I had, mm -hmm. the emotion that I had right. when, I, when I heard that, I just kind of knew, like, this is not what you're supposed to be, yes. what you're supposed to be doing. So yeah. then after you gotta that, follow I just your did gut. Exactly. You really do. And you got to learn how to listen. Yeah. And um, some of us do, because there's times when I am praying and I'm like, okay, Lord, you know, and I, I think I'm asking for things, yes. but... I don't always hear them, and I feel like I'm not. Maybe I'm not asking right, or maybe you know. So sometimes it's harder for some people to really hear what it is that we need to be doing. Absolutely. So maybe there's just too much noise, as they yeah, would say, exactly. way too much noise going on up in here. <laughs> exactly. You know, but it's taking that time and just breathing and relaxing and just really trying to find find out who you are and speak to God a little bit yes, more. Yes. Yes. So and what nice. I find also is that. Um, because God works through people. Mm -hmm. You also have to begin to pay attention to the people that God is planning yes. in your life. Like some people are there for a particular season yeah. to do a particular thing. Right. And then they move on, move they on. move out of your life. Mm -hmm. And then other people are there for something uh, a little bit longer mm -hmm. duration. Right. Um, so again, I think about Erica. The point when Erica came into mm -hmm. my life was the perfect point right. for her to be there. Right. But I also know that that was God directed right. because, like you, mm -hmm. I was praying. Um, I had taken early retirement mm -hmm. um, from corporate America okay. about uh, it's over a year now, okay. back in February 2013. And I know there were people who kind of looked at that and said, "You are completely crazy. <laughs> Why would you walk away from?" Your, and I had a wonderful job. Mm -hmm. I had a wonderful job. I learned. It was an incredible learning right. experience, okay. and and there and, and I was there for over uh, 20 years or so. Wow. It was very well established. Mm -hmm. People knew me. The CEO right, you course. knew me. <laughs> you know all of those things. So it was great. Mm -hmm. But again, just like when going into um, initially when I thought I was going in one place in college, and mm -hmm. God spoke and said, "This is not right. what you're supposed to be doing." What he spoke to me in this instance was, your time is up here. Mm. You've given everything wow. that you were supposed to give, right. and you've gotten out of it right. everything that you're supposed right. to get out of it. Okay. So it's time for you to, to move, move on. But it took me a while. Like, I didn't okay. listen okay. at first because I was like, okay. I just need to make sure that this isn't my own chatter, mm -hmm. that it isn't my own thoughts. I needed confirmation. And right. sometimes you can ask God, like, I need to know that this is really you right. speaking to right. me. And so I asked for confirmation, okay. and he got it. And okay. when I got it, I was like, okay, <laughs> I'm definitely supposed to be leaving. So, Yeah, no, that's incredible. Yes. Yeah, because I mean, just like I, I met you at Arts All Night at that wonderful festival in Trenton. Exactly. And you just, you inspired me just from your story about your book and everything. So, you know, I just said I had to bring you on the show so that you can kind of share your journey, 
You know, it's, I exactly. think it's a, it's a great thing when when women can come together and compile something like this. You know, this is a wonderful absolutely. thing. So, absolutely. And I have to tell you, the night that I met you, I don't know if I had shared this with you uh, the other day, but um, I was simply thirsty. Mm -hmm. And I had been thirsty uh -huh. for about the, the <laughs> past hour right. or so. And I kept saying, oh, let's go out and get right. something to drink. And what brought me to your booth was that the other, because at first I wanted lemonade, okay. but the other two lines were incredibly long. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was like 30 people mm -hmm. or so. And I'm <laughs> looking at these lines. I'm like, I'm not waiting mm -hmm. all of this line. And then, because I love tea. Okay. I love mm -hmm. tea. I'm not a coffee drinker mm -hmm. at all. But I, I, at any given time, right. I'll have all kinds of teas in mm -hmm. my house. And when I saw your booth, that immediately mm -hmm. drew me right. to you. Right. And the other thing that drew me to you, I'm just going to tell mm -hmm. you, was your hair. Because right. okay. I loved right. your hair. <laughs> Thank I, you. I was like, I love Thank her hair. You. Thank you. Um, you know, so just your right. presence mm -hmm. is what drew me, uh, and the tea mm -hmm. is what drew me to your booth. But right. look at what came right. out of that. Right. I just wanted a cup of tea. I know. And look at I what know. came out of that. And you came out and supported me for my phenomenal woman's yes. night out, which was wonderful. Which was incredible. You and yes. Gail came, and, you know, she also has her book. So yes. that's wonderful. Yes. Wonderful. Yes. Yeah. So I'm really excited that you came on here today. And if you want to tell us anything else about, you know, your other things that you do, because you do mm -hmm. a lot of things like in the community, right. and you have a couple things going on. So why don't you talk about some of those sure, things? Sure, sure. Um, I'm also an entrepreneur. Well, I left corporate America, so I had to do something. <laughs> so I decided I'll just become a full-time entrepreneur, right. and I have a travel club. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a part of Royal Ventures, which mm -hmm. is a travel club, mm -hmm. and it's probably the best travel club on the planet. Mm -hmm. okay. um, I love what we do, because it, it enabled me to kind of integrate different aspects of my life. Okay. I love to travel. Right. I needed to make some income right. and I wanted to um, help other people grow okay. in their businesses as well. So right. I do that. Um, I'm also working on a project with a group of people from um, Upper Darby in Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, theater arts is something that I also love. I'm not a theater art okay. major, never, but theater arts runs in my family. Okay. So being at the theater and watching mm -hmm. performances mm -hmm. is something that I've been doing okay. for years and years right, and years right. and years. Uh, my daughter's a performing art major at Howard University. Okay, I have nice. a brother who's an actor. Um, right. You know, so it kind of runs right. in the family. And I did some acting long, long ah. time ago. A long, long time ago. I was just having a conversation with a young lady telling okay. her, oh, my God, I would love to get back into mm. that. You know, because I loved it. It was, you know, we did like dinner theater and things like that. Oh, and nice. It was I love really dinner fun. theater. So, you see, we have something else in common yeah, as exactly, well. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, and so the project that they're working on is it's um, sort of forming a community-based theater art oh, nice. uh, group, if okay. you will. Um, and the way that I got attracted to them was that I also... Uh, wanted to do something in the local area in okay. Trenton. Okay. Um, and I had been introduced to their organization uh, like about five years ago. Okay. Just randomly, somebody that I was working with said, you should check these people okay. out. I'm like, oh, okay. okay. Um, it's an organization called IC Movement okay. in Upper Darby, and they do um, all kinds of performances and, and things like that. But for like three, four, five years or so, I didn't really pay that much right, attention right. to them until one day the gentleman that I believe he's the executive director reached out to me on LinkedIn. Wow. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I remember <laughs> right. this organization. Somebody told me, right, et cetera. Okay. So then I, they just happened to be having um, an event, and I went to that event. Right. And they have a, a goal, a vision of um, using what they do in theater arts to disciple families. Oh, okay. And so what they're creating is this vision around um, um, using theater arts to draw families nice. in. So not just to drop their children off, but to right. kind of be involved exactly. with That's that. Nice. And then the productions that they do, the learning that they do, because it's all based on learning the word and okay. being in scripture and all of that. What they do is they'll have things planned for the kids to do at right. home with the family. So Perfect. the ultimate goal is wow. discipleship in the home, nice. but connecting it to theater arts. Nice. So I'm just that's like exciting. really excited to be and working on yeah, that. Yeah, that's exciting. And, and it makes it even more exciting for me because with what I do, you know, with my workshops, mm -hmm. I decided about a month or two ago 
that even though you know what I do is for the youth, whether it's young right. kids or not, and I do it for some adults, I wanted to start focusing on the family. Oh, nice. Because yes. as you know, especially in our communities, you know, whether you're, it's a single parent or parents are just working too many jobs and the kids are left at home mm -hmm. and nobody's really educating them in terms of etiquette and, and things like that, I wanted to really concentrate on the family. Instead of me just teaching the kids, teach the family. Absolutely. Let the family learn also about dinner time. Because I know for me, growing up, we sat down and had dinner together. Yes. And when you have dinner together, there's so many important things that happen. So one, you're going to have, build a stronger relationship and bond. Yes. You're going to ask that person, well, how was your day? You know, if there's any problems in school, that's the time to talk about it. Yes. It's also going to um, probably, you're going to eat healthier. Because I think mm -hmm. when the family's eating together, you're going to tend to cook healthier. You're not going to be out eating fast foods and things like that. Plus, you're going to save money, right. you know, if you're yes. not eating out. Yes. Um, you're going to just do so many things together, and it's just a wonderful thing. So I love to hear anything that's family-oriented. I know it was about two or three weeks ago that Trenton, they had a family day, and I was like, wow, that's exciting. So I had to go and do my little volunteering yes, there because yes. anything now that's about the family, I'm just all for that because that is the key to also less violence. Absolutely. So that's Absolutely. just exciting to hear that. It's yeah, like and great, one thing that you thing. touched upon um, is single parenthood. Mm -hmm. So I am a single mom, mm -hmm. um, and I know there are sometimes there are people who who will look at that with um, a somewhat negative mm -hmm. attitude. But what I have found is motherhood in general mm -hmm. is something that has really, really strengthened me. Mm -hmm. And so I mentioned those things, motherhood, sisterhood, mm -hmm. and relationships. Mm -hmm. And what I've found, because I have uh, two daughters, I mentioned my one daughter, Olivia, who's a student at mm -hmm. Howard University, but I also have my other daughter, uh, Hillary, mm -hmm. and she has a, a son, uh, Zane. And we mm -hmm. kind of live in the house mm -hmm. uh, together and everything. And that sisterhood, is something that is beginning to emerge. Right. It's beginning to emerge between myself and my daughter, Hillary. Right. Um, we've had some challenges mm -hmm. in, in our sure. mother-daughter relationship <laughs> like, over the years. Like every other mom, yes. right? <laughs> so major, major challenges. Mm -hmm. But when I look at her now, mm -hmm. she is just growing into such a, a wonderful, um, other centered because mm -hmm. she kind of went through that thing where it's kind of me, 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 right. and all of, of that. Course. But she's really beginning to look at herself from a completely different uh, right. perspective. Mm -hmm. But what that's helping us to do in our relationship mm -hmm. is now add sisterhood right. onto motherhood, right. especially since she's a mom also. Right. And so that's the change. So exactly. when they have their own, they exactly. understand. They couldn't, not that they didn't have the mind to understand. But now they really can because now they're going through some of the same things. Exactly. Like when you were as a mom, they can relate yes, a little bit better yes. now. So her, she's walking in that role exactly. that I used to walk in. Mm -hmm. And the changes that I'm seeing in her, and I would say, it, it, I think changes is a weak word, mm -hmm. what, what I'm seeing. What I'm seeing is transformation. Mm -hmm. And that is helping our relationship, but not mother-daughter. Right. Um, it's more like beginning to be that sisterhood right. kind of thing because we can talk about mm -hmm. things that, like five years ago, right. <laughs> no, no way. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but now we can talk about um, different things. And then my other daughter, um, Olivia, I'm still kind of mommy to her, mm -hmm. which is fine. Okay. She's the which younger is, one. Yeah, she's the okay. younger one, uh, which is fine. But um, Olivia is incredible. Mm -hmm. uh, she's an incredibly talented person and I tell her all the time, you have no idea how gifted you are. Mm -hmm. You have no idea how much is going to come right. out of you because mm -hmm. it's that growth right. process and the more you grow, mm -hmm. the more you develop, the right. more gets revealed right. in terms of what you what your potential right, is exactly. and, and all of that. So she's in New York mm -hmm. now. She's mm -hmm. in a, a program, a William Esper Studio, and okay. she's studying acting okay, nice. for, for the summer. So it's okay, her and awesome. some of her friends and, and all of that. So again, that motherhood mm -hmm. thing, that sisterhood mm -hmm. thing, and the thing that ties it all together right. is the relationship. Yes. You know, and really, really bonding and building those relationships. Mm -hmm. and. Those relationships are also 
uh, or as you say, building relationships right. is what drives my businesses mm -hmm. also because um, you know, people talk about network marketing, right. but for me, the network, it, it is network marketing mm -hmm. industry, but underneath it, right. it's, it's all about relationships. It it's it all is. about it building <laughs> and cultivating yes. relationships. Yeah. You can get things done more if you have a relationship with a person. Exactly. You can't just stick things in their face and try to sell. It's exactly. getting to know the person. What is it that that person wants or needs? It? What, how can you help that person? Exactly. You know, a lot of times people are not about that. They're just about selling you and pushing yes. things in your face. Yes. And that's not how you build a relationship. You have to really speak to the person, hold their hand, you know, and just really talk Absolutely. and get to know them more. So, Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I'm so excited that I met you. Um, <laughs> you know, you're a positive sister. Thanks for being my new sister. Thank you. You know, I am really excited. And I really want to learn more about the Travel Club because I haven't had the time to travel because of my business being an entrepreneur. Mm. But I definitely want to learn more and, you know, do some of those Absolutely. things with you ladies. Absolutely. It's fantastic. Last year, um, I'm a big proponent of family vacation. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm the kind of person, that I'll call my brother in California, I'll call my brother right. in Pittsburgh and say, we're going right. to Florida for Christmas. <laughs> right. And actually, we did that. Right, Last nice. year, in 2013, we all, right. you know, and um, some of my family threw, flew to Pittsburgh, okay. I'm sorry, flew to New Jersey. Okay. We got in a van okay. and we drove down go. to Florida. Nice. Um, so travel has always been mm -hmm. something that I've been very, very passionate right. about. Um, and then we were, uh, another trip we went on last year uh, was Mexico. Mm. We were oh, in, nice. oh my gosh. Nice. It, and we were there. It was myself, my two daughters, and Gail. Okay. The four yeah, of us nice. went. Nice. Yeah, the four of us went, and everybody else at the resort was right. basically okay, a travel nice. club member. It was phenomenal. Yeah, I definitely have it to was go because I keep saying, I want to travel, I want to travel, yes. and I don't take time, which you know is so important. You have to take time yes, for self yes. and, and family and do things like that. Yeah. I know growing up, it was always fun. We used to get in our car, we had a wagon, and we would drive everywhere. You know, we'd go to Canada, we'd go to Florida, yeah, we'd go nice. to Detroit. And my mom would make these sandwiches, and you know, we were, we were from the island, so she'd make all these like, you know, fried oh, nice. things, fish and things, <laughs> and fritters, and all that fun stuff. You know, stopping by the pool, it, it was a lot of fun. There's a lot of families that are not doing that, right. you know, traveling together. So mm -hmm. anything family, I think, again, we Absolutely. have to really instill that into people and get people doing that family thing. Yeah. So with the Travel Club, one of the things that I also do is really try to educate people on the benefits of travel. Mm -hmm. So often I will post things um, under what I call uh, travel adds value. Okay. And I believe travel adds value in three key areas, family, mm -hmm. which is what we were just yes. talking about, mm -hmm. your career, right. um, and retirement. Mm -hmm. I'm retired, mm -hmm. and travel is basically right. what I want right. to do. Right. You know, so I, again, I use the, that sort of um, tagline, if mm -hmm. you will, to kind of educate right. people on the benefits of travel and the downside when you don't that it can have right. bad effects on your health and yeah, yeah, you know right. you don't know your kids you right. you looked and they were three now they're 12 <laughs> you know it's that so kind true. of thing no, so I agree I think travel is important because then you can also you're getting outside of that box of where you are Absolutely. and you're learning about other people and other cultures you know those things are so important to help you to grow and to be a better person as yes. well so yeah, yeah. that's that's an awesome thing. Again, I am excited to, to really <laughs> learn more about that, that travel club. I want to be a part of that. For good, sure. Good, for sure. Good. So well, darling, thank you so much. The time again has um just gone away so quickly. You know, when you're having fun with someone that's yeah. awesome and inspiring like yourself. So until next time, thank you for joining us. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>